In this lecture, we are going to fetch the details of the currently logged in user from our backend API. And then we are going to display the details of the user in the UI. So let's go to VS Code. In here, let me go ahead and let me close these files. We don't need these files for now. I'll keep this app.js open. And now what I want is inside this API calls folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it as users.js. And inside this users.js, we are going to write an asynchronous function from where we are going to make an API call to get the details of the currently logged in user. So here, let's go ahead and let's create a function. Let's call it maybe get logged user. You can name this function anything. And let's make this L in uppercase and this U also in uppercase. And here, let's use async keyword because this function is going to run asynchronously. I'm going to use arrow function syntax. All right, and we are also going to export this function. Okay, let's add try catch block here. This catch block is going to receive an error object. So if we reach to this catch block from here, we simply want to return that error object. Now in the try block, we are going to write the logic to make an API call. And in order to make an API call, first here, we are going to import the Exios instance. Okay, and let's go and let's use this Exios instance. So on this Exios instance, we are going to call the get method because here we are going to make a get request and this method is going to run asynchronously. So let's also use the await keyword here. And to this get method, we need to specify the endpoint, the URL of the API from where we want to fetch the data. So here we need to go to the API slash users or it is user. So let's go to Postman and let's check that endpoint. So here we have the user controller and here we want to get the logged user detail. For that API is API slash user slash get logged user. So let me copy this and let's specify it here. And with this, we are not going to send any request body, but this API here, it is a protected API. It can only be accessed by a logged in user, by an authenticated user. So here with this request, we also need to send the authentication token with the request header and that we are already doing. So let me save this file and in the index.js file where we are creating this Axios instance, there on that we are already adding this authorization header. So whenever we are going to use this Axios instance for making a request, whether it is a get request, post request, put request, delete request, it doesn't matter which type of request it is, with that request, it is always going to send this authorization header. In the authorization header, we have this bearer token and we are reading the token from the local storage. So this request, which we are sending from here, with that request, we are already sending the authentication token, the JSON web token with the request. So if everything is okay in this API, in that case, it is going to return us a response. Let's go ahead and let's store that response in a variable. And from this function, we are going to return the response data. And this is it. Let's save this. Now in the protected route, so in the components folder, we have created this protected route. In here, we are going to write a function from where we are going to call that get logged user function. So again, let's create a function here. Let's call it get logged in user. And here again, I'm going to use arrow function syntax. And this function it is going to run asynchronously. Okay. And inside this function, again, let's first add a try catch block for error handling. And in the try block, what we are going to do is we are going to call this get logged user. So for that, first we need to import it in the protected route. So I'm going to import get logged user from so from the 
current directory we are going to move one directory up there we have the api calls in that we have the users.js file so from there we are exporting this get logged user and that exported function we want to assign to this get logged user variable okay now let's use this function here let's call that function and this function is going to run asynchronously so let's also use await keyword in front of it and this function it is going to return us the response data so let's go ahead and let's create a variable let's call it response and to that let's assign that response data and instead of creating this response here let's create this response variable before this try block so here let's say let response equals null and then in the try block we are assigning that response with the response data which this function will return us and for this catch block we are also going to receive the error object okay now what we are going to do is we are going to check if response dot success if it is true that means the response was successful and in the response this api which we are calling here this get logged user api it is going to return us a user object so what we want is in here let's go ahead and let's create a state so let's first create a variable let's call it user and to update this state let's also create this state updating function which i'm calling as set user and here we are going to use use state hook so for that we can simply say use state and to use this use state we also need to import it from react library so that has been imported here okay and initially let's assign this user state with the value null all right now if the response is successful we know that in the response we are going to get the user object so in the response we will have a message property we will have a success property and we will have a data property and that data is going to contain the user object so let me go to our backend code there let's close this auth controller.js this message.js and this message controller let's go to user controller.js and when we are calling this get logged user api if you see in the response we are sending an object and in that object we have the message property the success property and the data property and this data property is storing the user object which we have fetched from the database based on the id now this id we are reading from the json web token which we are passing with the request so here what we are going to do is we are going to call this set user so this is our state updating function which is going to update this user state and we want to update this user state with response data so here you can say response dot data and this response data it is going to return us a user object and using this set user we are assigning this user state with that user object okay so this is when the response is success but if the response is let's say some error response some error has occurred while making the request in that case what we want is we simply want to navigate the user to login page and same thing we want to do in the catch block let's save the changes and finally what we also want to do is here before this children we are going to use this user state so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a paragraph and there i'll say name and in there we are going to display the full name of the user so i'll say user which is our state dot first name let's add a space and then user dot last name let's save the changes and let's see if everything works properly or not so 
let's first check the terminal and there let's see if we have any error so it says get logged in user is assigned a value but it is never used and that's correct because we have created this function get logged in user but we are not calling it anywhere so where are we going to call this function we are going to call this function when in the local storage we have a json web token so in the local storage if we have json web token in that case we want to call this function otherwise if in the local storage we don't have the json web token we simply want to navigate the user to the login page because as we learned in the last lecture when a user is logged in we are going to save the json web token of that user the authentication token of that user in the browser's local storage so if in the local storage a token is present that means the user is logged in but if it is not present that means the user is not logged in and when the user is not logged in we are navigating the user to the login page but if the user is logged in in that case we are going to call this function let's save the changes now so what will happen is when the application will be loaded for the first time this use effect hook will be called in there we are checking if in the local storage we have any json web token if we have a json web token we are going to execute this get logged in user function and what that function is going to do is it is going to fetch the user detail and it is going to assign this user state with that user detail with that user object which we are receiving in the response okay so with this let's save the changes let's quickly check if we have any error we don't have any error so our application is built successfully let's go to the browser and there let me go ahead and let me log in a user so here i'm going to log in using john smith account so if i click on this login button if we are logged in successfully it is going to redirect us to the home page but here we are not seeing anything if we inspect here and if we go to console i can see that we have an error and it says cannot read property of null all right this error we have because initially this user is null so when this component will be rendered for the first time at that time this user will be null right and on that null we are trying to use this first name property so that's why we have the error so here what we are going to do is we are going to use nullish equalizing operator for both first name and last name so when this component will be rendered at that time this user will be null but when this use effect hook will run after that it is going to update that user object that user state with the user object which we are going to receive in the response and then it should display the first name and last name from that user so let's save the changes again let's go to the browser and now you can see we can see the username here which is john smith if you want you can also print the email of the user so again let's add another paragraph here let's display the email display the email again we are going to use a set of curly braces like this and in there we will say user we will use nullish equalizing operator and then the email of the user and let's also add a line break let's save the changes let's go to the browser now and now we should see both username and email okay so in this way we are able to fetch the details of the currently logged in user if i go to login page and if i log in using mary's account and password is test1234 let's log in and now you can see the details of mary her first name and last name and her email address now in our react application currently we are creating this state using this use state hook but what we are going to do is we are going to do state management in this react application using react redux so in the next lecture we are going to do the redux setup in our react application 
and we are going to use Redux for the state management in this application. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.